everybody. <laughs> oh, who's this that made the swivel? Wait, am I not supposed to be on one, here? We have another swiveler in the house. <laughs> it's Big Pupper, as Mark calls him. It's Tate Litchfield. Tate, welcome to the nightcap. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, nightcap with the Land Geek guys. It's an honor, guys. I'm really excited. When Mike asked me, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I hope I'm <laughs> worthy. I'm excited. Oh. More than worthy. This is actually not, truth be told, not your first time on the show, is it? It's not. Uh, I had the honor, the priv- the luxury of being on in Vegas at boot camp. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> and now, Wait, now you're our first repeat guest. Who's calling Larry? Am I missing the joke here with Eric Peterson? You see this? Larry, how are you? Is he talking... I don't know. I, I don't know I'm, sure I'm, getting guilt there. And I, I, I'm not quick enough tonight. And I'm, I'm not... Now, if one of Eric's friends tuned in, it's supposed... Oh, oh, oh okay. he's saying hi to his friend Larry. Oh, oh, oh okay. Laura, thank you for that. <laughs> oh, Larry Overstreet. <laughs> oh, Larry Overstreet. Ah, there it is. Listen, if you guys can't tell, it's hat night on the la- nightcap. Uh, uh, Tate, what you got for a hat there? I got my Golden Knights hat on for Nightcap, right? Nice. Who are these Golden Golden Knights? Knights. You're a non-sports guy. Tell me. What do you mean? Who are are the Golden Knights, Mike? What what are you talking about? We're a non-sports guy. Who, you know? This is Vegas' hockey team. This is Vegas' hockey team. Because it makes sense to have an ice hockey team in the desert, man. It makes perfect sense. (laughs) But not only that, we're in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, Wes, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you, Wes. I agree. <laughs> Theirs are not mine, though. I don't know. I kind of like the newsboy hats, don't you? They asked me. They asked me to wear one. I was like, uh, uh, I don't have one of those. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's kind of tough wearing these robes. It's getting hot here in New England and and uh, Wisconsin. Hot out there too. Yeah, it was snowing. Uh, you know, snowed eighteen inches two weeks ago, and now it's like eighty and humid. So. <laughs> What about you, Tate? What's it like out there in Vegas? Oh, we had a gorgeous day. I think about 80 degrees. Nice, nice. and chilly. Chilly. You know, awesome. Yeah, downright frigid. Downright <laughs> frigid. Well, listen, uh, you know, we've probably gone over this before, but I always love to hear, you know, uh, you know, just a little bit about your background in the land business, Tate. You know, I think that I never tire of, of this kind of uh, kind of story about, you know, how, how'd you even, why land, Tate? Why land? Well, uh, kind of a long story, but uh, I'll keep it short. Basically, a good family friend of ours was uh, was buying and selling land in the middle of the desert, and uh, he was uh, making really good money doing it. And I was just out of school trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life and decided I didn't want to go to law school. And so I was kind of in this limbo spot, and uh, he came around and... I kind of hit him up and said, hey, what are you doing? And one thing led to another. I spent a week with him. And in that week, uh, he made $10,000 cash profit. And I was hooked. It was like, wow, he's a 20-something-year-old, 23-year-old kid. I'd never seen that much money. Didn't even know it was possible to make that kind of money in a week. And that was it. I was stoked. Hey, Barbara, thanks for joining us. And so ever since then, I linked up with Mark. And uh, the rest is kind of history. So I've been doing this full time for four years now. Awesome. Awesome. And I love it. And I'm happy to say that I'm completely 100% unemployable from here on out. Remember, I'm ruined. You're ruined. Exactly. (laughs) You heard about it. When you can can roll out of bed at whatever time you want to and go read your daughter a book in the morning, right? Take your time with breakfast. Yeah. Go into the office for an hour or two, meet her back for lunch. I mean, uh, and and make really good money uh, doing it. Uh, you know, your your time is too valuable to to be an employee. I'm sure. very very blessed, very blessed for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, once you get a once you get the business up and rolling, it's game over, man. And when I when I was getting into this business, I actually had a job. I was working at the state of Nevada. And I spent a week with my family friend and I learned kind of the basics of what he was doing. And I started a job the following Monday. And I remember I went in on Monday and I sat down at my desk and punching the clock. And the whole time I'm just, you know, 
counting hours. And I came home after the first day and I told my wife, that's, I can't do this. Hi, Allison, this is not good for me. She said, well, you got to stick it out. You got to find something else. And I was talking with my, my mentor and he said, you know, you got to get out before you get shackled in. And so I went in on Wednesday, Tuesday, I survived. Wednesday, I went in, I had a, a midweek review with my employer, my, my boss. I remember he sat down and said, hey, Tate, here's your ID card. Here's your password for the computer. And I remember saying, hey, listen, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I got to break some news to you. And he said, what's going on? I go, unfortunately, I'm putting in my two weeks notice. I'm quitting right now. And he's like, two weeks? You're not even trained. You can go home right now if you don't want to stay. And so I only have had a I real job. Two days. Two and a half days. And I was home for lunch. And so burned those ships. And ever since then. Hey, did Allison freak out when you came home that day or what? Yeah. I, the, the conversation, I didn't call her on the way home. I, I remember I just showed up and she was like, what are you doing here? It's like, yeah, um, it's just, you know, me and the state, we're just, we're not getting along. It's not it's not a healthy relationship. And so I had to break up and uh, <laughs> it was stressful, but uh, I knew what I was doing. I knew this business worked. And so I, I figured, why not? I'm Nothing to lose. You know, is there anything about the business that still surprises you, Tate? You know, something that, you know, about it that not in surprising, like you can't handle, but just kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, just kind of like, wow, you know, just can't, you know, anything that's kind of just like maybe some people who aren't in the business might find uh, a little surreal or, you know, maybe sometimes, I don't know, a lot of times people will hear us talk about the business and it seems kind of manufactured, but anything that still surprises you, like in your day-to-day -day sales and purchases and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it long enough that I'm not so much surprised on the buy side. It's more so on the sales side of the business. I'll speak with somebody who I met off Craigslist and they'll send me, you know, their credit card information. And right. I'm thinking to myself, there is no way on this good earth that I would trust anyone with this information, especially somebody I met off Craigslist and right. you just gave it to me. So, I mean, I'm always just amazed at the business itself, the fact that it works, it's predictable and it works all the time. Right. I love it. I mean, it's it's the craziest business. It really is. How but do you uh, if, if, you know, somebody out there might be saying, geez, you know, uh, I'm wondering how to do that myself. Right. How do I get somebody to actually trust me, you know, over the, uh, uh, you know, they met, we met Craigslist was where you put the ad. They responded or up on Facebook. How, you know, how do how do I trust? You know, how do you build that rapport, that trust? Has there been any key tactics or just. Uh, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to drop the pushy salesman attitude, right? Um, I think you've got to be straightforward with people and let them know that you're just a guy who's trying to make land ownership available for everyone. And, you know, that's why your prices are so low. It's because you believe that owning a piece of property is, is everyone's right. And it shouldn't be something reserved for just the select few. And I really believe that. So... For me, it's easy to convey that message. And I think the other thing that you can do is just be transparent, be honest. When somebody calls you, if you're able, answer the phone, shoot them a text, um, you know, be, uh, be yourself. Wes is saying, be pushy, be pushy. And <laughs> well, Tate, that, that leads to a question I have. You have to have some sales tactics, right? When you're on the Absolutely. phone. Absolutely. Absolutely. So give us an example or two, you know, well, then call what me. you do, what call you me, do Scott. to get, Oh, okay. All right. Call me. Come on. Ring, ring. I just picked up my calculator. Gee. <laughs> What's, hello, this is Tate. Hey, Tate. It's Scott. Uh, I'm calling about some property that, that you have for sale. Oh, fantastic. Scott, where are you calling from today? Uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Ooh, sounds cold. Why do you live there? <laughs> Everybody asks me that. <laughs> I, actually, oh. I actually love the seasons. I, I love the change from winter to spring to summer to fall. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Well, I'm in the swimming pool right now, so you enjoy that spring, that sleep. Rough. But, yeah, <laughs> anyways, Scott, which property were you interested in? Uh, it was this uh, five-acre parcel in Texas. Ah, nice. You've been down to that area before? 
Oh yeah, I love to go love to go hunting down there. Great, great, great. So uh, Scott, we do see a lot of activity on some of our properties. So do you remember what was in the ad? What was the pricing or any of that information for this property? I think it was a hundred down, like a hundred a month for sixty months, something like that. Okay, all right. Yeah, I um let me double check to make sure that's available. We like I said. I deal a lot with international buyers. I deal a lot with people from all over the United States. And so sometimes people just jump online and, and buy it because they're at a good price. But uh, I'm looking at the, the list of available properties, and it looks like this one is still available. Now, Scott, do you have any questions about that property? What can you tell me about it, Dave? I can tell you anything you want to know about it. The property's, you know, got no restrictions on it. Uh, it means it's perfect for hunting. It's perfect for your RV. You can go out there, ride your motorcycle, do whatever you want. It's basically the beauty of Texas is you can do what you want on this property. The price is right, obviously, hundred bucks down plus our dock fee of two ninety nine. Um, and so, in order to get this process started, it's a simple transfer or it's a simple transaction of uh, three ninety nine to get the process started. What other questions do you have about the property? Well, I mean. First of all, how do I know this is legit? I mean, this wow. sounds, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I met you on Craigslist. You could be, you know, any Joe Blow sitting in his basement trying to scam me out of some money. Absolutely. What I would encourage you to do, you know, is be an educated and informed buyer. Obviously, call the county. Make sure that I am who I say I am, right? Make sure that my name is on that deed. The name that you're going to find is uh, my company name. So look that up. And if I'm not on there, give me a call. I'll explain things. But uh, make sure I am who I say I am. You can also check me out on our website. Go there. You can read about testimonials. You can read about reviews. You can see my, uh, you know, I, uh, A plus rating with the Better Bureau of Business. Whatever you need. Oh, that's impressive. Very good. Can I get a copy of the deed from you? Sure, no problem. All right, awesome. So, um, Scott. I don't want to take up too much more of your time and I know you're a busy guy and what I'd ask is when are you looking to make this down payment? When are you looking to purchase this property? Well, I really have to talk to the missus. I mean, I Fantastic. can't, I can't make a decision without, without talking to her, but, I, but um, I'd like to move on it pretty quickly. All right. Fair enough. Is your wife around? Uh, she's down I'm, in the basement currently. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you want to talk to her, let's get her on the phone because like I said, I don't know when this thing's going to sell. It's priced right. It's going to move. That's why you're calling me, right? People really go on your website and just buy a parcel land without talking to you? You wouldn't believe it, but they do because this stuff is hot. It's priced so, so low that anyone can afford it, right? Where else can you build equity for 100 bucks a month? Yeah, you got me convinced there, Tate. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start drafting up the paperwork for this deal. What I need to do is collect your down payment and dock fee. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna need your card information, et cetera. And that's how I do it. I don't know, I think it Very just comes good. to you spend enough time and I'm sure. I'm, I'm gonna sure draw up the paperwork. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start drawing up the paperwork. Yeah, right, you just gotta have some confidence, right? Just. Um, I don't know. Another comment coming. We love this. <laughs> yeah, I love the instant equity line, the building equity line. Yeah, your banker will be happy. Yeah, is even impressed by it. This is awesome. And wow, Eric, Wes, I'm honored. Are you nervous? No, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, that, I'm nervous that Wes is watching the sales whisperer. <laughs> building equity, boom, love it. Awesome. That was awesome. I think, was guys, was I think it comes with you talk to enough people. You get confident, but you've got to know your property. You've got to be confident with what your process is. You know, there's a whole different line of tactics that could be used there. I could have built trust by Scott by talking to him about the financing process. That's something I do often. I'll say to you, Scott, have you ever owner financed a piece of property before? Nine times out of 10, people say no. And that's a great opportunity for you to step in and build some trust by explaining to them what the three documents are that we use when we're selling a piece of property. I could step in and I could say, Scott, let me tell you about a, uh, a purchase sale agreement, a promissory note, and a land sale contract, right? And if I explain all of that to you, you're going to trust me, right? You're going to know that everything I'm doing is to protect both of us. 
And that's a tactic that I think people overlook all the time. Love it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, and it, and it's all about knowing your your market, knowing your your buyer. Uh, and the longer you're in this, the longer you pick up on different types of buyers, right? I mean, there there's the long term investor. There's the recreational weekend getaway guy. Um, there's you know the person who wants to have land to live on someday. Mm-hmm. And it, who doesn't who doesn't have a ton of income? And those are the people I really I really I really try to hit home with them, you know, and, and say to them, our company helps people like you become landowners. And you touched on that a little bit earlier. I mean, you don't have to pay me five thousand dollars to own this property. You don't have to pay, pay me five thousand dollars today to own this property. You pay me a hundred dollars a month for sixty months, and it's yours. But then you own something, and. Uh, are these yes, recorded? They're, they're going to be. They, you can play this over and over again. And we're actually on YouTube. We're we're, uh, we're on YouTube now. Be, we're on the Land Geek YouTube channel. On, uh, Wes on YouTube. We're, you know, uh, you know, Netflix is looking at picking us up for a short series. Yeah. So yeah, you can watch. Hey Wes, <laughs> Wes, you can just go to the videos, uh, the videos portion of uh, of the Land Geek groups as well, and find all the videos in there. God, it's ten sixteen. Oh, you know what that means. What does it mean? It's time for our first segment, Mike. What's our first segment? Our first segment is the Facebook quote of the week. Oh. Quote of the week. Facebook quote of the week. All right, here we go. Or question of the week, but but I like this. Uh, I like this quote of the week, and and I have to give props to this person because she is now a repeat quoter of the week. Whoa! This, this is from Sarah Ant again. And you guys may have seen this, but I had to laugh. Sarah said, since I got into land, I've learned more about hunting than I'll ever need to know, how to grow aquaponics, how to catch gophers, what the pot laws are, how to protect yourself from attackers. But today, today, I learned how to run a brothel. (laughs) (laughs) That is definitely the Facebook quote of the week. (laughs) She's like working her. in a county in Nevada that apparently allows uh, those types of venues. So she was having an interaction with a buyer about that type of <laughs> uh, entity. I mean, that's even new for me. I've never had anyone talk. The hunting, everything else. I was like, yeah, check, 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 check. The brothel? Uh, nope. No, nope. no, check there. And no, thank you. I don't even want to learn about that either. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. I live here. I don't need to learn about the rules and laws regarding it. Like, no, thank you. So I think this is a good time to do a little bit of review of last week. So I don't know. If they, we had a little bit of uh, a discussion last week, right? We call it a discussion, Scott. What was it on? Negotiating tactics on the on the buy on side, the, right? On the buy side, yeah. On the buy side. So we came up with some terms. We thought we'd run them by you, see what you thought of them, Tate. So, All right. Uh, the first one, Scott, take it away. What's the first one? All right, so uh, our first term, Tate, for uh, a term on the buying side is, let's say you send out an offer and you get that signed purchase agreement back right in the mail, right? Okay. You do, and, and they did not counter offer. They accepted your offer. You do your due diligence. Everything comes out clean. No back taxes, no liens, no encumbrances. What do we call this, Tate? Well, for me, it's a no-brainer. It's a home run. It's a... It's a what, Mike what? Zanel? It's a humdinger. A humdinger. You're knocking it out of the park. Yes, indeed. Those are my favorite. I mean, who wouldn't love that? It's so simple. I love it when you don't even have to talk to them on the phone either. It's just like uh, they get an email response, and you're like, yep, yeah, everything. We'll start due diligence. You email them a deed. Next thing you know, you get a recorded deed in, or a notarized deed in the mail or in your inbox and an original in the mail. And you're like, wow, I can't believe that I even works. Well, most people would think, I think, when they get involved in the business, they don't realize how, how often that happens, right? The humdingers, they come like that. And aren't, you know, the humdingers, aren't the humdingers amazing when on a Monday you get a purchase agreement in the mail that has a counter offer of 15 grand over what you offered, right? And then the next day, you get a signed, accepted purchase agreement for um, the amount you sent out. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And it's amazing that it happens, you know, it seems like every time I remail, 
I get a humdinger every single time, even if it's an, a list that I've mailed to six times previously. It's awesome. Yep. That's why re yeah, remailing is huge. We got to talk about that at, at some point, Mike. Remailing. A good topic for another nightcap. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. Accepted offer comes in, but there's something going on with the property. The taxes are high or there's a wash. And so, you know, this is a property where we need to go back and uh, renegotiate. We call this the what, Scott? We call this the deflator. Deflator. Basically, yeah. you know, you have a reason now, right? I mean, I'm sure you love this, right? I don't take, I know you well enough that even on the humdinger, you're going to renegotiate that. I know. <laughs> Even when you get an accepted offer, it's not gonna, right? Am I wrong? You're no, you're wrong. right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say it's something I'm proud of, right? I never pay full price for anything. So definitely not on a humdinger. So what about deflator? What's your tactic now, Tate? Someone, I, I accepted your offer, right? Uh, you mailed me a property, $500, and, and you find out that there's a couple hundred dollars in back taxes and there's a little bit of a wash on the side. So, uh, you know, what am I going to hear from you? Are you going to pay me that accepted offer that I signed? Or are you going to? I'm going to call you up, Mike, and I'm going to say, hey, Mike, yes. great news. Due diligence awesome. came back on your property. Everything awesome. looks amazing. Awesome. We want to buy your land. Nice. Unfortunately, I can't pay you the price I originally offered. And here's oh. why. Oh. You haven't paid your taxes since 2005, Mike. It's true. Uh, you owe True. the county $180. Well, they told In addition you. to that, yeah, of course they're going to tell me. In addition to the mic, have you been to that property recently? Well, I've never been there. You haven't? Oh, geez. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. The road condition is horrendous. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get out there. I still want to buy your property because you and I, you know, we sign an agreement and I, I, I genuinely want to own it. Okay. But I can't pay you that five hundred bucks anymore. Well, Mike, what? the best I can do is one hundred and fifty bucks for it. <sighs> I know, I know. You're not retiring off it, I'm but deflated. yeah, you are. You might be, but do yourself a favor. Take this money, get this property off your records. Be done with the headache. Let me take over the tax responsibilities and go have yourself a nice night out with your wife. I'll do it. All right. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> that's a humdinger right there. That is a, I mean, that's why. That's, that's how you turn a deflator into a humdinger. Yeah, yeah just, for sure. I just won. That's like just a triple started. home run. Boom, bases loaded, baby. <laughs> What's that? What do they call it in hockey when you get a goal? Score? What's it called? Yeah. What's, What's it called? called? A score? Come on, Mike. You're killing me, man. <laughs> it's called a hockey basket, Mike. Yeah. A hockey basket. You just got yeah. a hockey basket. <laughs> yeah, you got a hockey basket. <laughs> hockey basket oh man look at this I love it rave reviews coming in as we go you're off the charts I better turn it down you guys are going to want me to come back oh yeah well, you're going to end up being a regular I feel it I feel it uh, the ratings are going to skyrocket <laughs> here's our favorite though right here it comes um, you get an ex accepted offer right uh, due diligence comes back you offer them 500 and they got like $400 in back taxes. There's so much they owe that it's just, it's unbelievable. So what do we call this, Scott? Well, okay. So the taxes are so high yes. that I'm not going to be able to offer this person any money for their property, right? You just walk away or what do you do? Oh, I mean, they could give their property to me. We would call that the $1 Skittle. The $1 Skittle. Have you had $1 Skittle say, well, there's so much owed, but you still... You you know, you're into the deal for a dollar, a ten or fifty, right? Is this a common thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, I got forty lots for a buck. <laughs> forty lots for a buck? Yeah, I called him up, and I just bag said, of skittles. That is a yeah. whole bag of skittles. That is a whole bag of skittles. And I was just like, listen, honestly, not even the county wants this property. You got so much taxes owed on it that let me take it off your hands again. <laughs> I'll make a, you know, I'm going to save you money on your medicine. You're not going to be dealing with the packets that you get every single month from the county. So let me take it off your hands. I bought it all for a buck, flipped it to another investor for like, I think 300 bucks a lot. Made a nice, uh, nice chunk of change there. Oh, but. Look at nice. We got uh, Brandy talking about a mentor. So let's talk about 
let's segue into that. You got to have one, Brandy. You have to have a mentor. Right. Let's talk I mean, about how does coaching work? Tate, what, what do you think coaching in your – I mean, you you are the coach of coaches, right? You are our epic coach. What What is – to you, what is what is coaching like? Really, honestly, if you look at it, what what does it provide? What what in your in your mind's eye when you talk about it? And we're talking mentorship. You know, you coach a lot of people successfully, very successfully. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. How does yeah, that- I mean, I go into every coaching relationship, and I treat it as a relationship, right? I make it very very known that I'm in this with them, and. Uh, I'm only interested in working with serious clients, right? People who are trying to make this business a lifestyle, trying to take it to the next level, right? If you're not interested in doing that, I'm sorry. I'm not interested in working with you, right? And that's why for coaching, we make you guys you know, apply for it. Because if you don't fit within our, uh, our vision, then, then we're just going to be wasting everybody's time. But more than anything, you get somebody who is involved in your business, right? You get somebody who knows the ins and out of your business, who can advise you on pricing, who can tell you if you're in the right area, right? If you're targeting the right kind of properties and help you move those properties, you know, in 30 days or less. So having a mentor, it's key. I've got two of them, right? I got a coach, um, you know, it's a business coach and, um, uh, I think that uh, they are definitely a direct relationship to the success I've had, right? Awesome. And even Mike, I would consider you kind of long-term, long-time mentor, right? You and I have known each other for what? How many years now? Uh, Four years almost? Yes, exactly. So, I mean, I lean on you all the time for advice, right? And that it's kind great, of advice. Yeah. We have a great community. I mean- The best. It's, it's the best. It's End of discussion. Are none. Yeah. I got a question. Look at this. Bart makes a good point. When did you slip your robe off, Scott? Uh, it's hotter than a nursing home in here right now. I'm the only guy here sporting the robe. I, I can't even handle it. You didn't send me mine. I would have worn it. We may have to have the next segment. We, oh, we're almost there because in three minutes I need the next segment. It's coming up, and we got a special guest for that. But let's let's finish. We did the uh, skittle. What's next, Scott? Okay. Uh, what do we got? Uh, oh yeah, we got a couple left here. Okay, so Mike. I sent you a purchase agreement back, or I'm sorry, you sent me a purchase agreement back, and uh, you want to sell me a property, you you counteroffered me, and you are not budging from that counteroffer. I offered you $1,000 for this property, you counteroffered me $2,000, and you are not budging. I'm not going to budge. You are not not going to budge. I'm not going to budge me, Scott. So Wait till uh, I get you on the phone. Yeah, right. (laughs) <laughs> what, what's the process that we go through, Mike? What's it called? We're talking about the optionator. We're talking the about optionator. This is a really so you take, we call it the optionator. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. No go ahead. relation to the baconator, right? No, no relation to the baconator. Okay. This is basically, you know, um, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my guns. I'm sure you've had those people hunt tape that hold their guns, and you let them know that hey, I work with a pool of investors, right? And I, let, let me see what I can do. But the thing is about the optionator, I think what it does, it parlays so well into the deflator because if you go these 60 days and nobody picks it up, you come back with the big deflator. I've sourced all, and I have a large pool of investors, right? And I've sourced them all, and none of them will touch us at this price. So you deflate them, right? So, uh, I mean, optionator, is that a, if you use that tactical octate, do you need to, or do you just talk them down to the deflator right away? I mean, I try to avoid it just because. I don't like spending a ton of time working a property that's not going to be mine, right? Um, and it, even if the price is $1,000 more than what I normally pay, that's still cutting into the profit. And you got to draw a line and you can't cross that line. And so most of the time, I'll try to talk you down, Mike. I'll get you on the phone, sweet talk you, and let you know that, listen, it's just not going to happen. And if it works, great. If not, I'm moving on, honestly. I don't have time for it. Nice. All right. I like that. I like that. What do you think? I think it's 1030. It's time to bring on a special guest on for the segment that I'm deeply in need of right now. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, without further ado, do you, have, do you have a little paper for this or no? no oh, paper? Yeah. Oh, here. Hold on. I got, a paper for, I got a paper for this. 
Here it comes. I get a three fill fill segment. Three oh, fill. Oh, I, get, I get my own paper. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. <laughs> Kate, get your Coca-Cola. Come on. Get, get it on this way. I'm ready. Here, here, hold All on. Right. Ben! All right. Never mind. What, is, it, is it too hot out there in Wisconsin? Come on. Get a cocktail. Bot my son, my go. son was going to pour for me. I got my 10 feet. Is this All right. Let's go. Jen, take the cocktail. Pour it in the glass. You've all worked hard. You've bought land. You sold land. Prost. Skull. Matt, thank you, my friend. What do, you think of Joe, huh? what do you think of Tate? Huh? He's knocking it out of the park today. Tate's very, Tate's very scary. You know, he, he, he's I the only scary. guy. He, yeah, he's the only guy I didn't talk to when I was at uh, the boot camp. So uh, you know, <laughs> he's very intimidating. Very intimidating. You know, intimidating. I, it's good. I'm trying to stay, uh, trying to stay scary. You know. <laughs> you do a good job. Hey, Matt, Barbara, I've got kids. Yeah, yeah. I got to go to sleep after this. <laughs> mm, great. Matt, Matt Forbes, you need a palm tree backdrop with that outfit on. Uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to like a derby party this weekend. So I, I got my new hat in the mail and I, you know, was real excited to wear it. So I looked it's to on. me kind of when I saw you in the lobby, I'm not going to lie. I was thinking of Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I, I get that like three times a week. Hey, it's so weird. You, you, you yeah. talk to the guy to pay phone. So yeah. I'm going to go have a friend for lunch. Yeah, exactly. Are you drinking Chianti? Chianti. 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 <laughs> 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 Matt, it. thank you so much. We love this segment. We love Thanks, you. Matt. Thank you for coming on. We'll, we'll you we're gonna throw you back down in the lobby without further ado, just because that hat's scaring the hell out of me. Good. It's Stay almost as bad as yours, Mike, right? Yeah. I know, Mike. This is a winter cap. I'm dying of sweaty, and I left my robe on. See you tonight, Mike. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Good guy, Matt Forbes. Good guy. He's crushing it right now. He, Having some he, good success. He created that segment, Tate. That's why we have him on every week. He created the brief. We left out one of our one of our tactics, Scott. One of no, our no, games. we didn't leave it out. We were just stopping. We were just oh, having okay. a slight hiatus for a for we a. We want refill. to talk to Tate. Tate's got a lot of insight. We want to talk to him about this one. This is an important one, right? He kind of alluded it a little bit, but we were talking about the skittle, right? But we're talking about. Are right, you mail me a, uh, an awful letter, Tate, right, for one of my properties? And I write back, I don't got one. I got, I have 30 properties. Mm. And you offered me $500 each, so I want 30 times 500, right? Is that what we hit? We call this to take it or leave it with two versions, right, Scott? What are our two versions of take it or leave it? All right. So the first version is the takedown. Tate, tell us about take takedown. Did you say take down or what? Yeah, the take down. Yes. Right now. It's the take down. Yeah, from this it's point the take down. Right? Okay. I'm take honored. Down. I'm honored. <laughs> now it's the take it or leave it. It's the take or leave it. <laughs> the take or leave it. Take it or leave it. Well, obviously, I'm going to go through, do my due diligence on each one of these properties. Right? I'm going to make sure I even want them because okay. most of the time, I have a hard time wanting 30 of anything. Right. So I'm going to make sure that there's stuff I want. And if it is, I'm ready to continue the conversation. Right. Assuming that the numbers make sense. There's no problems associated with them. They're not nasty in any way. Oh, taking it off a little bit, Mike. Slow down. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. There's children watching. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, there's not. We know that. On the East Coast. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. Only on the West Coast kids are watching. <laughs> All right. All right. And anyways, I'm going to go back to you. I'm going to say, you know, Mike, that was for one property. If I'm going to do this many, I need to get a little bit bigger of a discount on it. So, uh, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take them all off your hands for uh, $10,000 today. Resume, I'm going to assume all responsibility for the taxes and make sure that you never hear from that county again. And, you know, I'm willing to do it today. So what do you say? Right. And we're going to go back and forth and I'm going to explain to you again about why I can't pay full price. And that, you know, as an educated investor, I would never dump thirty thousand dollars into an area that I'm not familiar with. And I've got to, you know, understand that it's going to take me time to move these properties. I'm going to talk you down and I'm going to get you comfortable. And we're eventually going to do a deal around the number I want. Otherwise, I'm hitting the road. I like that. You know, what's good about that, too, is because when you have that many properties, there's still a big enough number to really move people, right? Because they're not looking at it per property. They're looking at a dollar amount and they're saying, you know, I have this I need in my life or this just bill just came up. And then, you know, so that's why you can really truly do what Tate's talking about, right? You can get 
a bulk purchase for such a ridiculously cheap price because you're uh, per property that is because you're still throwing a large number in front of them and that and that's going to move them you know why you can do this the reason you can do this and mike you know this it's because not many other people out there are willing to spend the money they might have the money but they're all bark and no bike bite right so they might say oh i can get 20 grand for it. it's like well if you can get double what i'm offering you then you should you right. definitely should but call that person back I guarantee they're not going to actually go through this deal. I've got cash today. That's right. the difference. That's why you're able to get these big bulk deals at an even better price than a one Z or two Z. So true. So true. And you let them know too. It's like, you know, listen, if you want full price, I suggest you go to a realtor, but here's the caveat. We, you know, you and I both know the realtors don't want to touch these. This, they, they can't move these things. So, um, you know, it's going to be a long waiting game and we're talking cash today, cash now, right? It's like that commercial, like one eight hundred cash now. It's cash now. It is. It moves people and it moves them quick. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, again, it goes back to that confidence, right, that we talked about at the start of the show. You got to have confidence when you talk to these people. And I am perfectly at ease with letting a deal go that doesn't make sense, right? I'll walk away from it. If it's not at the number I need it to be, then it's not a good deal for me. <laughs> Cash when? Cash now. Is that is it my accent you're making fun of? Us? <laughs> I don't know where it's going. Who's making fun of your accent? No, I said cash now. What said cash when, Mike? I said now. <laughs> is it? I can't. Maybe I'm saying it. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I think we hit all. The, I think we hit all the negotiating tactics on the we buy did. side. We never knew that. The Tay didn't believe it. I love it. We even added it. Believe it. I love how these all. I think, uh, you know, I think next week people should tune in for negotiating tactics on the sell side. Huh? Love it. Love nice. it. Nice. All right. Wow. <laughs> Does anybody, wow. in the, anybody in the audience have questions tonight? Any topics you guys want us to talk about quickly? I think we should go to the other segment while they're thinking up their questions because uh, I know a special guest tonight has an answer for that segment, right? Yeah, sounds good. Here, let me get my well, anybody got any questions? paper ready. Let me get my right fancy now. graphics up here. Ready? I'll do the fancy noise. Our third and final segment of the evening is the Shove It Quote of the Week. It. It's not the final segment, Scott. You kind of lied to the audience there. We do have one more. What, the toast? No. Wait, you're giving oh, me all the right. I'm sorry. Our, yeah, our, our Scott so likes many to segments. Say truth out there, you know? So many segments. The Facebook shove it quote. No, not the Facebook. The shove it quote. We take. Did you come? So you know we get these right. We mail out letters. Everybody's oh, yeah. always happy, right? They always love us, right? Yep. Yeah. In fact, I'm actually working on a like an an audio compilation, and this is kind of something that's been in the process for a while now. And I'll just reveal it here tonight. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm keeping all the angry voicemails that I get, love and I'm nice. I'm making a soundtrack. And so when people say, oh, I want to be a land investor, I can be like, play. And it can just <laughs> play for a couple minutes. I'm working on it. I don't have enough content yet. I mean, I guess I'm not offering low enough, but that's in the work. And Eric sent me a few. So, Mike, Scott, if you guys have got any good recordings, send them my way because I'll add them to my mixtape. But, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good one. I got it uh, this week. The property, 10 acres. I offered $2,605 for the property. That's reasonable. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> she countered at quarter million dollars. <laughs> under the phone number, she put don't call. And then under remarks, she put I hate you. Oh, oh. How could she hate you? How could she no, hate no. you? She doesn't even know me. You are not <laughs> a hateable guy. I'm a nice that guy. I mean, contrary nice to popular belief, I'm a nice guy. Uh, quarter million dollars though i mean <laughs> the good thing i'll say is if you're gonna counter you might as well counter high right like don't come it, she's got yeah. a better chance of getting a quarter million than she does 20 grand go all or none right like go, go big but what kills me is she took the time to write this out lick an envelope put a stamp on it and send it to me like what just be like everybody else and throw it away i agree with barbara how can you hate the tape it's, it's not, not possible. possible. Not possible. Not possible. I used to love when I was taking all the calls you know, to get people and just when they were angry and just convert them. It's just uh, 
it, it was always fun, you know, just Hug getting your haters of anger and converting them back. <laughs> Hug the haters, right? Um, what is he making fun of me? Hey, Mike, Michael, I'm sorry, I'll probably mispronounce his name from Milt, 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 Mass. See, Mike, hey, yo, hey, yo. He, doesn't, he doesn't think I have an accent, I guarantee it, right? I, I guarantee it. <laughs> Schaefer, Wes Schaefer, uh, throw that quote up there. Yeah, uh, Wes, we'd love to see your hate emails, uh, we would love to feature. One of your emails on a shove a quote of the week, so send them our way. Info I'm at the at, you know, I'm looking at a future guest on our show right here, is what I'm looking at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a given, I think. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be epic right there. That would be epic, yeah. <laughs> so we do have another segment, and let's pull it out. Ready? Okay, all right, all right, all right. The last segment of the evening. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Like really? I, there is no accent. I, I totally, <laughs> fully agree with you. You ready? Yes. Tonight, last segment is You Complete Me. Ah, uh, so that's, that's from a sports movie, I'm told, Tate. That picture of of, uh, of Tom Cruise. I guess it's a Jerry Maguire, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a love movie, Mike. It's a love story, not a sports movie. <laughs> Come on. All right, so uh, in the You Complete Me segment, uh, Mike completes me or I complete Mike, and tonight, Tate, you're going to complete us. So all here right. we go. Pressure's on. Uh, we'll give me an example. <laughs> yeah, give me an example. Give me an example. All right, all right. We're going to give you an example here. Uh, so let's see. What was our example earlier, Mike? <laughs> so yeah, we do stuff like just basic, like, hey, I got a, I got a seller on the phone, and she was really nervous thinking that she was going to be scammed, and I told her, and then you just go into something uh, like that. Okay. Okay. Just kind of, kind of work in a little answer there. So these are really simple ones, especially for so – go ahead. All right, Tate, I got you. You ready? So you just sent out a 1,000 mailers, okay? All right. And in about two weeks' time, your phone is ringing off the hook. Okay. You can't keep, you can't keep up. It's driving you crazy. You're trying to spend time with your daughter and your wife. And uh, it's it's unmanageable. You need to hire who? An intake manager. Oh. Yes, excellent. Yeah, that, was a law. that was a law, but it was, was a law. <laughs> I, Scott, I haven't taken a phone call on the intake side of this business in probably two and a half years. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, intake manager is is, is such a great move, right? It's uh, you know. It just changes everything. I mean, when I tell people, you know, anybody can buy a property or two, but when you want to start executing at a high level, you know, that phone's going to ring, those emails are going to come, those faxes are going to come, and, and you just don't – because here's the reality. And you know this, Tate, right? Back me up on this one if you if you agree. Some people, they will, they will definitely sell you the property, but they want you to listen to the story first. They want to tell you how they bought it, why they bought it, why yeah. they don't – and they're beautiful people. But that's yeah. a half-hour conversation. You can't have 10 of those a day. You don't have the bandwidth. No, no, it's a, and the other thing is people really want to sell their land that badly. Right. Right. Like that's how bad they want to sell. And, you know, sometimes I remember we, I'd screen people's phone calls, just let it go to voicemail, send it to voicemail and uh, call them back finally. And they'd be like, I've been trying to call you for two weeks now. It's like, yeah, you know, we're just having second thoughts about your property. <laughs> uh, the price has changed. Right? I love it. That, yeah, that's like so. a version of scarcity on the sell side, but on the buy side, right? It's a, We're having it's a, second thoughts. So many people want to buy, sell their land out there that I don't know. There's we an overabundance know. of your yeah. property. We don't need them. Yeah, so <laughs> love it. Awesome. Very good. The You Complete Me segment. Oh, so, Michael, Mike, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. You should hook me up. Give me a call. Uh, Facebook me, one of the two. Yes, um, thank you. Michael, thank you, Michael. Michael. Hey, Mike, I think it's time. We need to make a plug here quick because uh, we're getting to the end of the show soon. Yeah, it's right? time. And I have, a, I have a special request myself for the end of the show. All I'm right, sounds good. There. Okay, so so uh, May Flight School is coming up. Okay, really? May Flight School. Yeah, starting when May 15th. Okay. What? May 15th, Tuesday, May 15th. You are correct. 6 o'clock on the West Coast, 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Exactly. Uh, with the all-knowing Scott Todd, our Jedi Master of Training, right, in the Land Geek community. 
Yes. And uh, Mike and I have decided to have a live Q&A webinar, so to speak, uh, next Monday night, May 7th, for anyone interested in signing up for flight school. So this is directed primarily at the investor toolkit folks or for folks in the motivation group who uh, are considering land investing and taking it to the next level. And uh, w what I would say to the community right now is that uh, this program boggles my mind. Yeah. It is it is highly specialized. It has uh, content that will get you to the point where you are doing deals very quickly. So if you've been thinking about this for a long time, think about getting into the land business. Uh, I mean, I think I think everybody watching us, Mike, can can kind of pick up on how special this thing is. I mean, Tate is working at home, spending most of his day with his 15 month old daughter. Right. You're you're at home. 30, uh, 20 days, 22 days out of the month, right? You're working six days at the fire, at the fire station. Seven, uh, I, yeah, but, but I mean, seriously. <laughs> but you enjoy it too though, right? Like you enjoy it. I love it. Uh, but, but this is a business that, uh, it, it creates time for you and your family, uh, it creates, it creates financial freedom. So if anybody wants to, uh, have a live Q and A with Mike and I, we'd love to do that with you Monday night. I don't know. Is there any way we can uh, share an email address, Mike, or not on your end? I can't type. Oh, yeah. Info. Let me add something to that, Scott. The people that I've yeah. seen have the most success in this business go through flight school and then they come and they talk with me. They go through mentorship. And that's when you really start to see the growth that you want. But you got to have the fundamentals sorted out. There's no better person to learn that from. And Scott Todd, I mean, right. Enough. In, I mean, what can you say about Scott Todd other than wow, the guy is yeah. so knowledgeable. And anybody who's listening in this would be doing themselves the worst disservice by not getting into that class. I mean, I've gone through flight school, and I've already, you know, I know what I'm doing, but I'm still learning stuff. So amazing. It's uh, he's the best person I believe to teach the basics of this business to anyone at this time. He's just uh, he's incredible. And as someone said at the boot camp, uh, he's a genius. I heard more. Someone came, Scott Todd. He's a genius. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a genius. So, yep. well, all right. Well, we'd love to take we'd love to speak to any of you guys. If you don't want to do a live webinar, drop us an email. Schedule schedule a call with Mike and I at uh, thelandgeek.com slash training. And we'd love to talk to you guys. Tate, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was no awesome. Problem. Yeah, it was awesome. No problem. Happy to be on here. Maybe if uh, if the public likes it, you guys will invite me back. But uh, it was a it was a pleasure. A lot of fun, guys. Thanks for the audience listening in. I it was it was a great time. Perfect way to spend wow. my Thursday. This is my special awesome. request. I want to play the intro on the exit. I love this. The intro on the exit. What about a toast? Yeah, we got a right? toast. Are we toasting yeah, during? Toast. Okay, yeah. so after the toast, we're going right into the intro for the for the exit. Oh, uh, the exit. The exit. Wait, did you have a special request that you needed to fulfill? That was it. I want to. Well, play that's the it. Then the you exit. need to make an outro. An outro. An outro. outro. All right. Next week. Come on, guys. I'll make, I'll make an outro. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, that's it. yeah we gotta we gotta have an outro then. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. Okay, I, I want to pull uh, that up, and I don't think I can pull them up with the with the. Hold on a second. Let's do this. Let's do the. I'm going to bring this back down. I'm bringing Matt up for the. Uh, well, Matt's still the, here. Uh, nice. Oh yeah, he's a diehard. He loves it. We're bringing him up for the toast, and then I'm going to bring him back down, and I'm going to do the. Uh, there you go, Matt. The, Matt, uh, refill, my friend. <laughs> All right, Scott, you doing the toast? Uh, yeah, I got a toast. You get, uh, unless you have one. No, oh, you're the best at it. I'm the best at it. Oh, you're sweet. That's so nice. Yeah. So, hey, hey, Tate, thanks thanks for joining us. Matt Forbes, as always, thanks for joining us. This is kind of a funny one, but it, but it uh, kind of struck my fancy. You ready? Oh, wow. Yes. As you slide down the banisters of life, may the splinters never point the wrong way. Mm. <laughs> cheers. Thank you, boys. Cheers. Matt, cheers. I'm dropping you down. I'm bringing up the thing, and here's the exit for the intro. Tate, thank you so much for coming. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where's my – I got to hit the – oh, there it is. Hold on. Oh. And, Tate, thank you again. Thank you, guys.
Woo! Love the exit intro. <laughs> I gotta let it play a little bit. That was good. Yeah, but I'm, I'm serious. Gonna we gotta, we gotta get I'm an outro. We swivel. We need oh. an outro. We got swivel back. Oh. <laughs>